I want to tell you something that is very refreshing to me. And that is when I meet someone, someone who one might call a normie, a normie who, you know, I get to know, I see them, you know, semi-regularly, maybe we do stuff together, and maybe I know them for months, several months. And through all that period, I never find out what exactly they do for a living. And they don't understand what I do for a living, right? I like that. I really like the fact when I meet someone who isn't talking about their job, I find that extremely refreshing because you, when you see that, when you have met that, you have met a person who is not tethered to what they happen to do for a living. And that is a very, I find that very healthful. <laughs> so the reason I say that is it, I, I think it's pretty depressing. I was thinking since the other day, you know, I did that podcast episode on BS jobs, which, you know, I got a lot of feedback back about people found it pretty interesting. But one aspect of that is the fact that a lot of people now identify, like they draw their personal existence from the fact that they have this, that, or the other job, okay? And I think that's fundamentally suspect, okay? Because I think, if anything, the things that you should go down in history for are not necessarily going to be your job, right? I mean, you, you look at figures in history, this includes a lot of academics before uh, you know, universities and stuff were invented. But I mean, even someone like, you know, let's say St. Paul, right? So St. Paul, we remember him because he went all around Asia Minor and the Mediterranean and he like told people about Jesus, right? That's why he, we remember him. He's such a significant figure. But what was his job? Does anyone know? Smash that like button and comment if you know. He was actually a tent maker. That was his job. No one freaking remembers him for being a tent maker. However you feel about St. Paul, no one cares about his job. Now that's how he paid the bills, that's how he did his travels. Maybe he, you know, maybe he got some donations too. But I, I view it as a fundamentally good thing if someone can work a job and not view it as their personal personality. Because what that means, personal personality, that's a stupid thing to say. Um, but it, because really, a lot of times you'll meet someone. I think I did a video on this like a couple of years ago when I was complaining about nerds, as I described them. So people who are in this like highly specialized field and they can't understand anything outside of that field and you can't talk. And, and when I was in my PhD program, this is how I became, right? Because I'm surrounded by people who talk about the same academic issues, theory, internal issues that no one else in the world freaking cares about. And in fact, really, if you try to explain them the thing to people in the real world, you kind of realize like how inane they actually are, like how obscure and unimportant they are. But either way, you know, I, I view that as pernicious when people can only talk about their job where they view themselves as an extension of their job, right? Now, that's annoying enough if you have someone who has a job and makes that their passion. But additionally, someone who has a passion, the, the same fallacy goes into people who have passions and therefore decide that they must make that their job or that that is necessarily, I mean, I mean you know, I'm not, if you, if you really enjoy what you end up doing, that's fine. But there are a lot of people, just to give you some examples, let's say you, ha you meet a kid, this is a common thing, right? You meet a, an urban youth in a, a, a city somewhere and him and his friends love playing ba basketball all the time, right? That's a common thing. And what do all those kids, all these 16-year-olds tell themselves? I'm going to I'm going to go pro. I'm going to be in the NBA. I'm going to be balling. That's going to be my career, and it's a freaking delusion. And I think all of us know it, right? Now, one of them out of 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000, I don't know exactly the statistic, will in fact go to, you know, have some kind of job playing basketball for at least some period in their life. There's a chance of that. But fundamentally, basketball is a hobby. It's not, and a hobby is, I don't say hobby to even diminish it, but it is not necessarily something you should expect to build your life on. The same way, there are a lot of kids now who are freaking lazy and don't do anything, but, uh, you know, oh, I can, I have a deviant art. Therefore, I like this, so I want to have a career as an artist. That's kind of delusional. I, I think we all see that. But in the exact same way, 
a lot of people are interested in academic things or, uh, oh, I really want to study this, that, or the other, and universities, you know, I know they're kind of corrupt and lame now, and, like, you don't really do that stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's not a very conducive environment for actually learning at this point. Uh, so I don't want to be involved in that. But a lot of people have this idea that they have to be paid to do what they want to do. And that is just, I mean, that's kind of nonsensical for my, I, I don't know. From my perspective, I kind of feel like if you really want to do something, money, I mean, money's not going to motivate you even more. In fact, it'll kind of, it'll kind of sterilize it, uh, I think. Uh, you know, it reminds me when I was in, uh, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, uh, I learned, I was learning Chinese. And then I decided, well, you know what, maybe I should take a Chinese class. And I will just say the speed at which I learned Chinese, I don't know, just plummeted when I actually started taking the classes. Firstly, because I, I knew most of the stuff in the introductory classes. But then I was like, well, you know, I don't need to do this on my own time because I'm, you know, I'm doing it in this kind of regimented fashion that's formalized for me. And that, a lot of times, it will actually kill your passion. You might say, oh, I want to work doing this. Oh, I would really, you know, love to have a job doing what I love. But it might actually end up killing your passion. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the problem. And, you know, passions change. People kind of forget that. So anyway, that's all I want to say. Um, as, as part of what we've been talking about with jobs, I just kind of feel that it's too often that people tie everything they are into the job that they have. And I think it's really important. I mean, you guys know if you've watched my channel for a couple of years, I've had a bunch of freaking weird jobs uh, and there's no shame in that. And I think it makes you a more well-rounded person um, if, if, if you're doing, you know, random manual labor or working in a random office, uh, especially if you're starting out, if you're, if you're like in your mid-lower 20s, there's nothing wrong with that. And it gives you perspective and you don't need to feel like a dork. Um, if you have a job that's a dork's job, as long you like, you don't want your job to be your occupation. Your personality has to come from something aside from that, right? So, and I have respect. Again, I have respect for any person I meet who is not tied to their job, and I can know as a person, and I don't have to know anything about what they do. I like that.